Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the cause and the outcome of antisocial personality disorder? I'll refer to this disorder as ASPD. This is an interesting way to look at this question. Often when we talk about psychopathology, we just look at the cause. Like what are the risk factors for a certain disorder? But how about the cause and the finish? How does it start and how does it end? So this analysis is going to look at the causes of ASPD, then go to the outcomes, including all-cause mortality. So first, a quick overview of ASPD. We see that it's listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual as a Cluster B personality disorder, the Dramatic Erratic Cluster. And it has seven symptom criteria and three are necessary for a diagnosis. We see repeated unlawful behaviors, consistent deceitfulness, impulsivity, aggressiveness, a reckless disregard for safety, irresponsibility, and a lack of remorse. The prevalence of this disorder in the population is about 3.6%, and we know it's highly prevalent in the prison population. Depending on the research you look at, anywhere from 18 to 80% of the prison population has ASPD. That's a wide range. I think the true percentage is probably somewhere between 60 and 70%. Now, many have argued that ASPD is technically the most socially destructive personality disorder, mostly because its relationship to violence and crime. It's also the most costly financially, in part due to the cost to incarcerate criminal offenders who committed crimes because of the tendencies we see with ASPD. Although one can certainly make an argument that narcissistic personality disorder is more costly because of the mismanagement of resources associated with that disorder. So individuals with ASPD are more likely to commit crimes. Individuals with NPD are more likely to get in positions of power and cause a lot of destruction by committing fraud at higher levels. So again, it's debatable, but as I mentioned, a lot of people believe that ASPD is the most costly at a social level and an economic level. Now, this disorder has substantial genetic liability in terms of its cause, which means that the heritability is considered fairly high. Depending on the study, anywhere from 38 to 69 percent heritability. As with all personality disorders or any disorder that has a genetic influence, we can't do much about the genetic component other than measuring it and reporting it. Therefore, we're left to focus on the environmentability, the environmental stressors. We hope to identify environmental stressors and hope that if they are changed, that's enough to prevent the disorder. Typically, the way we view the environmental stressors when it comes to ASPD is to look at two areas. The first is adverse childhood experiences, also known as ACEs. This is a collection of negative experiences that can occur like poverty, witnessing violence, and neglect. The second is childhood psychopathology. The psychopathology of the greatest interest in terms of ASPD would be conduct disorder, ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and ODD, oppositional defiant disorder. Sometimes these mental disorders are referred to as stepping stones toward ASPD. Clearly, this psychopathology, these other disorders, they also have a genetic component. However, we still consider the presence of mental disorders like these as environmental as they relate to the possible causation of ASPD. So let's break down these two areas, and we'll start with ACEs. We see a lot of different findings around how strongly adverse experiences predict ASPD. Now, the usual logic applied here is that the more ACEs that somebody has, the higher risk they have of really everything bad happening to them. Poor financial situations, lower education, relationship failures, more physical health problems, and more mental health problems. There's actually a whole other list of problems associated with ACEs as well. There's a lot of studies on this. Now, in terms of the development of ASPD, we do see that certain types of harm seem to increase the risk greatly. For example, we see that physical harm is a major risk factor. We also see that two specific types of neglect confer elevated risk for ASPD. A father who is uninterested in a child and a parent who is uninterested in a child's education. So for whatever reason, those two elements seem to, again, confer a special risk. It's not immediately clear why those two really stand out. Now we see other risk factors as well. An overprotective mother may be a risk factor, bullying, inconsistent discipline, witnessing intimate partner violence, excessive television viewing, and particularly for children younger than 18 months, we see a few different elements that can really increase the risk. 
a failure to greet. So, for example, if a mother doesn't greet a child who's under 18 months, silent interaction. So, if a parent is interacting with the child but not talking, so no verbal part, and maternal withdrawal. So, if a mother pulls back and she's cold and distant, those seem to increase the risk of ASPD as well. So, that's a look at the ACEs. What about the psychopathology? Well, we see a few different things stand out here. If a child is chronically aggressive, that child is 27 times more likely to develop ASPD compared to a child who is not chronically aggressive. So aggression strongly predicts ASPD. We see a few studies that connect conduct disorder, ADHD, and ODD to the development of ASPD. I talked about that before. But it's worth noting that there are some studies that show that ADHD doesn't really seem to predict antisocial personality disorder. So we see some mixed findings as far as ADHD. Essentially, there is little disagreement about conduct disorder and oppositional defiant disorder increasing risk. And just because some studies show that ADHD is not a risk factor doesn't mean it's not associated with factors related to antisocial behavior. For example, ADHD is tied to high school dropout, unemployment, substance use disorders, and arrest activity. So all factors that are related to antisocial personality disorder. Sometimes ODD, CD, and ASPD are thought of as categorical representations along a continuum of antisocial behavior, each representing a different stage of development. ODD, early childhood, CD, adolescence, and ASPD, young adulthood. So that covers causes, but what about the outcomes we see associated with antisocial personality disorder? Well, we see several, some I already mentioned, imprisonment, criminal violence, divorce, dropping out of high school, unemployment, and comorbidity with other mental disorders like major depressive disorder, bipolar disorder, and of course, premature death. And death is referred to in a lot of studies as mortality. So now specifically looking at the mortality element, I'm really relying mostly on one study here, and I'll put all the references that I used in the description for this video. But this particular study had a 27-year follow-up period, which is pretty impressive considering how most research in this area goes. So that's a long period to be looking at. Now, ASPD is predictive of early death by all causes. We see a median survival time that's 13 years lower than an individual without ASPD. Now, the median is different than the mean. The median is the number in the middle of a data set. So, for example, if you had five ages in a data set, one, one, five, eight, and 100, the median would be five. That's the number in the middle when they're rank ordered, right? So it's not just randomly put together. They have to be in a rank order. Now, the average of those same numbers is 23. So we see how the median kind of controls for extreme values. So in terms of, again, median survival time, we see a difference of 13 years the median lifespan of an individual with antisocial personality disorder is 71, and for an individual without the disorder, 84. So again, median and not average. Now, this study really wanted to get at the effect that ASPD had on mortality. So to do this, they have to control for other variables that could also lead to mortality. And they did this by using a method called propensity weighting, which is a version of trying to control for other variables. They controlled for a number of variables, including sex, race, age, socioeconomic status, education, unemployment, disability, prior major depressive disorder episodes, substance use, bipolar disorder, and hospitalization within the last year. One variable that they did not control for is smoking. And this turned out to be pretty important. As we look at the results, this will become clear. So, as I mentioned, essentially they're looking for the main effect of antisocial personality disorder, controlling for other factors that may lead to mortality. So to understand the risk of mortality with ASPD, we have to look at something called the hazard ratio. So what this means is for a particular time period, what is the chance that somebody with ASPD will die as compared to somebody without ASPD? How many more times likely would the person with ASPD be to die? than the person without it. The hazard ratio of dying with ASPD is 4.5. So 4.5 times more likely. Now that's all cause mortality. What about specific cause mortality? 
Well, they looked at a lot of specific causes. I'm just going to go through some of the ones here that really stood out. So malignant neoplasms, otherwise known as cancerous tumors, the hazard ratio here, again, in theory, isolated to ASPD was four, four times as likely. Chronic lower respiratory disease, so chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and asthma, 5.6. Now, here's where we run to a problem. We know that smoking is associated with this as well, and that variable was not controlled for. I mentioned earlier that would be important. We really don't know the main effect here of ASPD because that smoking variable is still out there. So that's a problem, but still kind of a surprising finding there. In terms of HIV, the hazard ratio was eight, eight times more likely. That one was quite surprising. In terms of death by suicide, we see the hazard ratio is three, three times as likely. Now, two other surprising findings. Heart disease was about the same with antisocial personality disorder and without the disorder. I would have thought it would have been a bit higher. It was a little higher, but really, again, close to the same. And accidental death was actually lower for antisocial personality disorder, 0.58. So that really stood out as surprising as well. So what is the moral to this story, right? We see the causes for antisocial personality disorder. We see a lot of negative outcomes, including a lower life expectancy. Well, I think that what we can learn from this is that poor parenting takes a disastrous toll. It predicts poor outcomes for the children and society as a whole. The most sensitive time in development when somebody is a child is the one associated with the lowest level of scrutiny for parents. For example, when children are really young, they don't go to school. So you don't have any school personnel observing. You don't have any other people kind of looking at situations saying, hey, you're doing this right, or you need to do this differently, or whatever, right? Parents are just kind of on their own. And the damage that is done early is the damage that tends to last. I know whenever I talk about topics like antisocial personality disorder, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.